Hello and welcome to this, another episode of Tours and Tactics with me, Nelligon. Today we're going to be exploring the Green World Garrison, Red World Garrison, and Blue World Garrison. A building I am going to just call the Garrison, because it's much easier. Now to truly understand the Garrison, we're going to have to look at the map first. The Garrison is in the north, center north of... The borderlands just to the south of the main camp for whoever owns that particular borderland it is probably one of the larger more complex and frankly probably one of the easier keeps to take if you look at this map here there are at least five different routes into this keep so that means you've got five angles to cover if you're defending. So we're going to look at those now. Where we are currently, that's the outside of the spawning area, is right inside the one long wall. And we're going to head up to the stairs and see what we can see from there. and we're going to pause it here. What you can see from this point of view here is the massive open space from between the wall and the other areas. You could set up any number of stuff out there. Those are all neutral mobs. If they're yellow names, they're neutral. If they're red, if your group can't defend your siege engines from PvE monsters, then you can't hope to defend them from PvP characters. But this is our first main angle of attack. And it's going to be from the majority of the time defending against people coming up from Sunny Hill, or Longview, or Woodhaven. And it is a very nice route to attack to. You got four destructible walls, it looks like, and a gate. You can just bust that open without too much effort and move right into the inner area, which leads to the next walls, and we'll get to those eventually. But now, as we resume, get a little more views of that nice big open area. Wolves. I like wolves. Not when they're attacking me, but I like them generally. Now this, this little area I'm actually intrigued by. I want to know if we can set up a siege engine here. Imagine setting up a trebuchet on this little tiny plateau here. Or some other type of ranged weapon. And you're pretty out of touch of people trying to get line of sight definitely something I would like to try out. Go in the map here. Those are the different color areas. But I would definitely like to try to set something I would definitely like to try to set something up here and see what we can do with it. Now where we are heading now is towards the second gate you would have to approach if you're going through Route 2, as we're going to call it. It leads you around the back here. And right into the area with the Keep Lord. Of course, in order to reach that, you have to go through two gates. So that's Route 2. We're going to go with Route 1 being the along the wall. And Route 2 being from that southwesterly route there. And 
And now as we head here, we're going to go towards Route 3, which is the back entrance. That leads a winding trail along this rock area here. There are plenty of opportunities along this approach for the defenders to fire down on you. Which is why it would function more as a secondary attack area, I think, than a primary one. Only because, as we've been talking about with gates and such, and why you don't focus solely on getting everybody through the gate, is because it allows the defenders an opportunity to AoE the hell out of you. I don't know about you, but I would prefer not to get the AoE the hell out of. Like I said, this is a very complex keep. While it could be easy to attack, actually, it is pretty easy to attack just because of all the angles you can attack it from. Defending is a whole other story. I mean, if you're focusing on the single area, then it'll be easier to defend against. But if you're against an enemy who is able to split their forces effectively, they're going to steamroll you, hands down. I have a feeling the garrison is going to switch hands often. I don't know what that is. Orb of power. Ah, that is the orb of power. So this is where orbs of power are held. I can't wait for a more prolonged beta so we can actually try some of this out. This is the back door. This is the route that leads directly to the Keep Lord. As you can see, that's the one gate. Because if there's anything we love on this show, it's gates. So you have to break through that gate, and we'll head down there in a moment. Head through this gate. I think there's only one gate down there. I don't know what the glowy green beam is. Maybe it means there's an orb of power there? We'll go with that. Why not? There's no other ways up here, at least that I can tell. A spike wall there, I guess to deter flying beasts? No idea. We got this stairwell up here to the wall. Not much to see, just like so many other walls and gates we've seen so far. Area to shoot down upon the massive zerg that will more than likely be massed at your gate. Hopefully not. We're gonna we're gonna we're gonna remain optimistic with this. That, that there's not going to be a massive zerg waiting outside the gate. And we head down the stairs, this very narrow area, which gives the defenders an opportunity. Uh, I kind of swim out here. We're going to fade through that because I swim out there and I swim back and there's nothing to really see. It's just the water approach. So as you can tell, we head up the stairs here. You would attack and take down that first gate or if you're the defenders, fire down at the gate there. So there's not really much room for maneuver with siege weapons. And if the enemy has siege weapons set up here, then you're probably going to want to target them first before the people. Just kind of hope they get bored. I know I would. And then you head up yet another long, winding path. And then up yet another narrow area. Look up at the pretty glowy green beam. Where the defenders are still firing down on you, hopefully. Unless they've already fled. And 
and then through this gate here, and right to the Keep Lord. You'd think the Keep Lord would have better things to do than just stand in the middle of this rotunda. But no, he's got to stand there and look menacing. So we're going to kind of run along a couple of routes real quick. Walk along the walls of the inner keep, which have destructible walls, so you don't have to mask the gates here. I'm thinking if you have access to large siege weapons, one of the main routes just through the walls is probably going to be your best bet. Just open up entire areas of the walls and just run in. Here's me breaking the cardinal rule of taking supply from keeps. Aw, supply dull yak. So we've really got attack route one through here. Across these massive plain. All the the deadly white moas. And the occasional wolves. So you're coming through the walls, through the gates. This is this is gonna be your most direct route right here. If you've got the forces and you've got the siege engines, just go this direct route. It's so wide open. I mean, look, there's three destructible walls right in a row. In the meantime, you can have rams taken down the gate, and that gives you four to just spam people in. So you head in here, pass through the gate, and do I see if you can climb up that slope there? Or, silly me, you could take the stairs. I guess if you don't destroy the walls, then that gives you a better opportunity to head directly for the Keep Lord. So that might actually be a strategical alternative. Hmm. So you can head up the slope there. Head across the bridge. There's the gate down there, as you can see by the pot of oil being built. That route seems to provide a little bit more cover for the attackers, and the defender's not as much of an opportunity to fire down on you unless you're stacked in front of the gate. views of the destructible walls. <gasps> A very fatal fall down there would be fatal. Redundancy is redundant. So we're on the f we are currently standing on the first gate you would have to break through going this route. I believe, unless it's just a bridge. If it's just a bridge, then it's not a gate. Amazing revelation, that. Plenty of room for ranged defenders to fire down on anyone trying to take out the Keep Lord. I don't know why if... You if you were the Keep Lord, you wouldn't be up here.
So now we're going to check out the defenses on this far wall, which is a little bit smaller. We've got a destructible wall there. We got the gate. We've got another destructible wall here. Not quite as much openness for the attackers. But it does get you right near the supply. So that might be something to take into consideration. So yes, the garrison is just a big, massive, open area with way more attack points than it probably needs. It is a keep though, and thus worth more points to hold. I don't know if you really want to though. I don't know if it'd be cost effective to really fully equip and defend this monstrosity of a keep. I mean, it's decent, but... I mean, even the bay has its certain angles. This one is just not a very good position. So now we're going to look at the map one last time, and we've got our five main routes of attack, which gives the attackers way more ability to attack than they probably need. So we've got number one up here, the large open plane. Number two, the slightly smaller open plane with about equal number of destructible walls, actually. We've got number three down here, where the Dolyak Caravan is currently moving up. That's got two destructible walls along its route. We've got the one on the right here, number four, which leads to one destructible wall, but then you have to go through the secondary keep. And we've got the fifth, which is the back route, which is a two gate to take down and a nice winding path that leaves you very open to attackers. So that's the garrison. It is a disaster waiting to happen. It really is. I'm not a, very much a fan of this keep. So we're just going to kind of finish looking around the walls, get our vantage points. I wish it had been daylight. It gives a little bit more of a view so you can see what the surroundings look like, where you can attack it from. So on the next episode, in contrast to this being not one of my favorite keeps, we are going to explore what I consider to be my absolute favorite keep. My absolute favorite keep. Well, technically it's a tower, but still awesome. And that's Cragtop. But until then, my friends, game on and take care.